Photosynthesis Part 2. In the previous video, we looked at the light dependent reaction. Now we're going to look at the light independent reaction. This happens in the stroma. We have a cycle in which carbon dioxide comes in from the air, ATP and NADPH come from the light dependent stage. Together, they create glucose. So, let's see what happens. In the stroma, we have a molecule called rubellose biphosphate, or we can say RUBP for short. This molecule combines with one molecule of carbon dioxide. Now, the dots represent the number of carbons they have. So, rubellose biphosphate has five carbons, and carbon dioxide has one carbon. With the help of an enzyme called Rubisco, they join together to make a 6-carbon compound. Now this 6-carbon compound is not very stable, so it immediately breaks down into two 3-carbon compounds. These are called glycerate 3-phosphate. We can call them GP. 6 carbons gave us 2 times 3 carbons. Then ATP and NADPH help to convert these GPs into TPs. Of course, during this process, the ATP and NADPH get broken down into the following products. These go back to the thylakoid to help take part in the light-dependent reaction. Since we have two GPs turning into two TPs, we're going to require two lots of ATP and two NADPHs. Okay, so let's say we have a box. This box is going to be a useful organic compound. For example, glucose. Now glucose has six carbons. From the TPs, one carbon is going to be placed in this box. The other five carbons are going to join together and turn back into RUBP using ATP from the light dependent stage. We have now completed one cycle of the light independent reaction. However, in order to make glucose, we need to have six carbons. That means we're going to have to spin our cycle six times. Two, three, four, five, and now we have six carbons. So this is packaged and ready to go. Now sometimes in questions, they like to refer to the amount of TP molecules required. For example, we know that we make two TP molecules per cycle. In order to make glucose or any hexose sugar that has six carbons, we need to spin the cycle six times. This is because we only get one carbon from each time we spin the cycle. So, six spins of the cycle will give us 12 molecules of TP. From these 12, two of them are going to turn into glucose, and 10 of them will be used to regenerate RUBP. So for now, make sure you remember this. It's a simplified diagram of the general cycle. One RUBP, plus one carbon dioxide gives you two GPs and two TPs. And remember that each time the cycle spins, we get one useful carbon. So now that we know the general structure, if they ask us to make a sugar with six carbons or five carbons or even three carbons, all we have to do is multiply it. For example, if you want to make a six carbon sugar, that means you have to times everything by six. So remember, this is the general structure of the Calvin cycle, named after the scientist who discovered it. Now, look at this question. This one, this one, and this one. They're all five or six markers. And they're all asking the same thing. Explain the light independent or the Calvin cycle. So, just like before, we're going to write down the main points 
in an exam style question about the light independent reaction. Let's turn the lights off to stay true to its name. Step one, carbon dioxide combines with the five carbon compound RUBP. This produces two lots of three carbon compound GP. The two GPs get reduced into two TPs. Using hydrogen from NADPH and energy from ATP. The TPs are converted into glucose or any named organic substance in the question. For example, pentose. So that means you have to make sure you read the question properly. All the RUBP is regenerated and make sure you include the word light independent reaction. So you can think of the light independent reaction like a flour grinder. You put your materials in, spin it around and get your products. However, what would happen if we stopped putting the materials in or stopped spinning it around? Would we still get our products? Let's see what happens. So here's a common style of question. An inhibitor blocked Rubisco. Because this enzyme is no longer working, what happens to the levels of GP, TP and RUBP? So, we know the cycle is still going to spin because before it got blocked, we still had some of each remaining. Now, the six carbon compound is gonna break down to make GP. At the same time, it's no longer being produced because Rubisco is not working. So if it's not being made and it's being used up, eventually the six carbon compound is going to be finished. GP continues being turned into TP. At the same time, since all the six carbon compound is gone, we're not going to be making any more GP. So GP also finishes. TP turns into RUBP. The same happens with TP. And finally, RUBP is not being used up because Rubisco is not working. Since all of those compounds turned into RUBP, that means RUBP's levels are going to increase. Okay, another example. What would happen if the light dependent stage stopped? In other words, what would happen if the plant was in darkness? That means we won't make any more ATP or NADPH. So these two arrows would no longer work. That means TP would not change as it's not being made or being used up. This would freeze the production of any useful sugars. As for RUBP, it's still being used up because Rubisco is working this time. However, since it's not being made, that means eventually all the RUBP will finish. As for GP, we can see that it's not being used up. However, it's still being produced. Therefore, overall, the amount of GP would increase. And that was a light independent reaction. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.